Dear Chairman, dear colleagues, as a fragile cancer is most unfavorable in terms of uh, development, mortality during the first year from uh, the identification of the disease uh, may count for 70 percent. So more often, and uh, these are men rather than women, you see uh, cancer, esophageal cancer among all oncological diseases in men is shown here, and women have a uh, rear percentage of that disease. You know that there are different morphological variants, adenocarcinoma, um, squamous uh, cell, and here you see survival rate depending on morphology. You see how in adenocarcinoma and squamous cell carcinoma, uh, the survival depends on the stage of the disease. Until recently, the main method of treating esophageal cancer has been surgery. However, patients uh, um, at early stages uh, um, uh, are not uh, so numerous, and not all processes can be operated, even in the clinics where uh, they perform surgeries in an excellent way, it tends to improve the results of surgery using radiotherapy, chemotherapy before surgery were not successful. Radiotherapy and uh, chemotherapy after surgery did not result in positive results as well. And uh, during recent uh, years, starting from 1996, uh, since Cooper's results were obtained and afterwards there appeared hope and uh, reliance on chemoradiotherapy. There were a lot of results of treatment where a special place was occupied by chemoradiotherapy. However, chemoradiotherapy, uh, due to poor tolerability, is not used so often, and uh, hopes for cooperative uh, chemoradiotherapy or independent um, so surgery is uh, the basic method of treatment where uh, it plays the role of, or control over metastasis and radiotherapy is aimed at uh, prevention of local relapses. Chemotherapy and radiotherapy postoperatively did not result in improvement and uh, we lay hopes for chemotherapy and radiotherapy uh, together. Depending on the advanced nature uh, of the tumor, whether it is in the walls of esophagus, we choose the method of treatment. Uh, uh, in cancer, which is in uh, penetrates mucus at T uh, A stage, uh, uh, there is very low uh, growth of distant metastasis, nodular um, uh, uh, low risk of nodular metastasis. Um, endoscopic resection of mucus uh, is applied without. Uh, uh, major surgery, and at stage T1b, when cancer grows into submucosal uh, layer from esophagus, uh, they uh, we uh, uh, esophagectomy. It's a historic approach, and nowadays these are candidates for preoperative chemo radiotherapy as well as independent chemo radiotherapy. Now there are recommendations where at stage T2 and 0, the main method of, uh, is surgery, chemo, radiotherapy, or three modal therapy combined surgery and chemo, radiotherapy at uh, T3, 4, and uh, absence uh, or presence of uh, lymph nodes, chemo, radiotherapy, and three model uh, therapy combined chemo radiotherapy with surgery at uh, advanced stage number four uh, radio or chemo radiotherapy is used for palliative 
purpose. There have been a lot of trials uh, starting from 1996 until now. I'd like to dwell on some of the center uh, trials which define the place of these methods of treatment. This is cross uh, trial third phase where you see randomized uh, trial uh, comparison of preoperative chemo radiotherapy with surgery. And uh, we see that the re the results show that the uh, mean uh, uh, what uh, uh, su survival grew uh, from uh, uh, up to 47 uh, percent uh, in preoperative uh, treatment. Here you s we see. Uh, the advantage of chemoradiotherapy preoperative versus surgery. And depending on uh, morphology, uh, when adenocarcinoma and squamous cell carcinoma, uh, we see advantage of chemoradiotherapy versus uh, surgery. Everything is achieved due to high toxicity. This trial assessed preoperative chemo radiotherapy versus surgery, and you see that local relapses uh, and local, regional, and distant uh, relapses and anastomosis were more frequent uh, just with one surgical treatment versus preoperative chemo radiotherapy. We see the trial uh, poet where preoperatively they assess chemo radiotherapy or chemotherapy with a adenocarcinoma of a gastric esophageal junction. And the results show that in the group of patients which went to chemotherapy with further surgery and in the other arm, they had chemo, radiotherapy, and surgery. What did we receive in the group as with squamous cell carcinoma? This, and uh, and in, uh, so, and so uh, local control was high versus uh, solely chemotherapy. And uh, as to lymph nodes, uh, so the values were significantly higher. Uh, five years survival in adenocarcinoma was higher in uh, significantly uh, higher in chemo radiotherapy preoperatively. Here are the standards. NCCN, it is shown that at T1B uh, stage, uh, it's possible to perform chemo radiotherapy as uh, independently, but it's not cervical part of esophagus, but uh, the thoracic part of esophagus. Uh, esophagectomy in T4 stage. We solely use chemo radiotherapy or radiotherapy as palliative approach uh, to overcome dysphagia. A meta analysis of efficacy of preoperative chemotherapy did not show stability in efficacy of chemotherapy. Efficacy was at place, but it was uh, it didn't last long. And uh, while comparing with the meta analysis and the role of preoperative chemo radiotherapy, uh, it showed more stable and positive results of chemo radiotherapy as to the volumes of radiation. Historically, everything was changing. ITOG8501, ATOG9405. So initially, they radiated all esophagus. Then in ERTOC9405, they used to set up uh, five centimeters along the length and two centimeters along the uh, width up to the margin. Uh, uh, they used all methods, and as a result, a CTV is equal to GTV plus uh, 
uh, step up three, four centimeters. Recommendations of RTOC 1010. Uh, GTV is equal to primary tumor plus uh, uh, redundantly, uh, redundant uh, nodes, uh, involved nodes, and CTV is equal to GTV plus uh, uh, setups four centimeters upwards, downwards, and one centimeters uh, along circumference. Uh, and uh, here you see extension for of paraesophageal and uh, iliac nodes. Here we see the volume of radiation that I've mentioned. There is PTV and CTV and GTV. Here we see reconstruction uh, for CTV and reconstruction uh, for PTV. Undoubtedly, while choosing the volume of radiation and dose distribution, we consider limitations uh, for uh, lung, heart, and liver, and uh, burden on uh, heart is significant. It will influence the life of patient in the future. What is better, IMRT or 3D in comparison? While well, analyzing, we've seen that in irradiation, the use of IMRT and dose distribution uh, has advantages versus 3D uh, plane uh, irradiation. What are the major conclusions? As soon as tumor affects uh, a submucosal area, there are metastases in lymph nodes. The volume of irradiation in CTV is equal to GTV plus uh, step uh, up four centimeters. After trimodal therapy, the majority of metastases are distance and retrospective analysis show that that IMRT has advantage versus 3D radiation and uh, in esophageal cancer great important uh, uh, is uh, the uh, elevation of the dose in heart which uh, reduces the rate of survival in this group. And um, I'd like to present our results in uh, blocking us oncological center, the results of uh, preoperative treatment of uh, patients with esophageal cancer. There are 56 patients, two arms, one group went through uh, chemo, radiotherapy preoperatively, the other arm solely surgery. And uh, of course, uh, all necessary uh, tests were made, bronchoscopy, so I will not enumerate them. Uh, fortunately, uh, well, we've been using PET uh, CT, laboratory tests were performed, and there is a uh, uh, characteristic of the material, both groups. Uh, uh, had primarily the lower uh, thoracic uh, uh, esophageal part. So there were two uh, courses of chemotherapy in the design, and uh, single dose was too gray. Uh, here is a misprint. It's 42, 44 gray preoperatively. And there was a dilemma whether to perform chemo radiotherapy or in two uh, courses of chemotherapy and uh, for us it was good be, so that patients that had dysphagia, uh, dysphagia uh, so went down and so, uh, so and they were treated without storm, gastrostoma. Uh, as to the uh, the tumors were approximately similar in both arms, in both groups. Toxicity was not uh, manifested, in, so in chemoradiotherapy only third degree in single cases there was no fourth stage, and uh, even the toxicity that was uh, uh, noticed was eliminated, and uh, there was no need to discontinue treatment. Characteristics of uh, uh, operatives has shown that chemoradiotherapy didn't impact the quality of surgery. 
and the length of uh, duration of operative and blood loss did not go up while analyzing uh, patamorphosis uh, uh, of uh, the material after surgery has shown that the group of uh, preoperative chemo radiotherapy, third, fourth degree of patamorphosis, accounted for more than 65%. QC dependence uh, or, or, or the degree of patamorphosis in primary the tumor in lymph nodes. Surgical complications uh, were, um, had no difference, significant differences in both groups. In conclusion, uh, induction chemotherapy at the initial stage of treatment is tolerated well enough and uh, decreases the degree of uh, dysphagia, which allows patients to have uh, well, normal nutrition during treatment. In all other cases, a special therapy to correct side effects was not needed. Using chemo uh, radiotherapy in squamous uh, esophageal carcinoma uh, results in significant reduction of the uh, depth of invasion, length of uh, primary tumor, and uh, uh, rate of lesion, metastatic lesions in regional uh, lymph collectors. The result of histology uh, show uh, full uh, um, no, but, uh, show, uh, treatment patamorphosis and uh, preoperative chemo radiotherapy uh, significantly increase the opportunities to perform radical resections of esophagus. Thank you. Huge thanks. Who would like to ask questions? If there are no questions, I have a brief one. What's your attitude to the tactics uh, that we see in publications of non-surgical treatment of patients with esophagus cancer when intermediate results are evaluated, are assessed, and the decision is made, surgical treatment or chemotherapy? Uh, we have considered uh, this issue. In our center, uh, the surgical treatment uh, has been at the very light, or high level of uh, performance excellence. We had some problems, political problems, but in different situations, we suggested and considered this issue. Uh, if a patient has a full effect after the first stage, uh, we assess the, assess the patient. And uh, the important thing is uh, the time frame between the first stage and the second stage. As Americans, uh, the Americans suggest uh, 51.8 great dose, it's a sum total dose. In Europe, uh, the total dose more than 56. If uh, the gap more than three or four weeks, uh, the dose is to be increased up to 60 grays. If there are no questions, Thank you for very full, detailed presentation. I think I understood uh, that uh, you didn't deal with severe dysphagia, uh, but uh, the fourth uh, stage we did uh, induced radiotherapy, chemotherapy, uh, and dysphagia relieved in. Uh, in case of severe dysphagia, usually brachytherapy is used. Uh, uh, bronchi in brachytherapy, there are uh, uh, top restrictions 
and stenting. In case of stenting, in principle, uh, we discussed this issue with Sergei Tkachev, uh, whether to treat patients with stents or not. I managed patient, patients with uh, stents uh, until the time when I lost one patient. Now we try not to admit patients for uh, chemo radiotherapy uh, because we saw cases with uh, fenestration but our life experience showed us uh, that uh, we shouldn't enter this risk zone in two causes of induction radiotherapy you saw the uh, the improvement in of dysphagia nearly in all patients and these preoperative causes uh, they were well tolerated and there was no necessity to um, put gastrostoma and now we in fact uh, uh, we consider the issues of uh, personal safety of a doctor there are no counterindications. Uh, there is no mentioning of counterindication uh, against uh, radiotherapy if a patient has a stent. But life experience showed us uh, the different things.